welcome to this video. Today I'm going to be showing you how to replace the inside mechanics of a GameCube joystick. Nintendo GameCube joystick. Um, you can see this one's a bit wobbly. If you've got this problem, should be able to fix that right now. Well, we'll see. Let's get started. So, for this you will need um, a tri-wing screwdriver. I don't know if you can see that. It's a bit hard to see, but it's it's kind of like a Phillips, but it's got um, three wings instead of four. You can get these on eBay for like three bucks. Dirt cheap. Uh, all the stuff I've got here is dirt cheap on eBay. This here is called a solder sucker. You're going to need this. You're going to need a soldering iron. Actually, um, depending on the type of controller you have, you may or may not need a soldering iron, but um, we'll get to that later. You will also need I apologize, I didn't have them handy. Uh, you will need a new GameCube analog stick. So what I got here, I get these also off of eBay for dirt, dirt cheap. Like six bucks for a bunch of them. Got like 12 of them here for just like six or seven bucks. So not very expensive. All right, so let's take this thing apart. Just unscrew all the screws, as you probably already knew. and then just lift this back panel off and set it aside. You're not going to need it right now. Alright, so next you have your inside of your GameCube controller. I'm going to pop this Z button out just for convenience. I'm going to take this cable off of those pins, the pin that's holding it on there, and just let that hang loose, and then I will just lift this whole circuit board out. And then this, with the buttons in it, can go right over there, out of your way. So now we have the motherboard of the GameCube controller. So what do we do with this? Well, don't be afraid. It's not really that complex, if you know what you're looking for. So to get it to be easier to access, we are going to find these two black tabs right there. We're going to just push those in gently, and this thing just kind of folds away, like so. So now you are going to determine what kind of controller you have. So if you can see, these were solder points holding the um, joystick module. Actually, I'm, you can just pop this cap right off. It doesn't hurt anything. So this module is held on by these um, solder points. This was the original version of the controller. Later on, they made a version that was held on by screws. I wish they had always done the screws because they're a lot easier to replace. But um, since I have one of these, I just desoldered all of these solder points. That's what you should do. If this is what yours looks like, then just desolder all four of those. Um, depending on whether or not you want to replace these potentiometers, uh, you could desolder those, but I am not. I, I didn't. So, yeah. I didn't really want to do any resoldering and the potentiometers hold it on fine for me. I don't know, I'm, it's probably a big mistake, but I don't really care. So, what you're going to do now, once you get either your potentiometer, the solder points desoldered, or your screws unscrewed. You might have screws in the back here where these solder points are. So once you get those unfastened, you're going to just pop 
those potentiometers off and just bend them gently away. And then you're going to take that right out. So next, oh yeah, I should point out the solder sucker um, is handy for desoldering. If you don't have one, I would recommend it. Again, dirt cheap eBay garbage. Works like a charm. Just push in the thing and push the button. Alright, anyway. So, let's see what we can do with this. So you'll notice that it already has potentiometers on it. I am going to just pop those right off. If you're uh, comfortable with soldering, then um, you could replace the potentiometers as well. I'm not going to do that once again. Those just pop right off just like they did on the original. And you've got this. You can just put that right in where the old one was. However that goes, like yay. And then these just fold gently, gently back into place. And let's see, make sure everything's good. Yep. Okay. Now, we put everything back together. Just pop that cap back on. And then, we'll put the black plastic thing here back where it belongs. Those little, those two little tabs you remember go back in where they were. Make sure it's in how it was. Oh, if these have come off, these are the um, L and R buttons. Those, I believe, oh, hold it. Those. All right, folks, sorry about that. My camera ran out of batteries. Anyway, to get this back on, first you will want to put these, see these fall, fell out on mine, these little conductor things, whatever you like to call them. They call them, they just slide right in there. Same for that one. And then just make sure the wire goes in the back there, that little gap. So then you can put it back on how it was. Make sure those tabs click in. And then you're good to put everything back together. So, to put everything back together, just take this panel here, just set that inside, make sure everything just fits in nicely. Put that um, cable back where it was, around that pin there. There we go. And then, one thing you want to make sure of is that these analog, um, whatever you like to call them, sliders are all the way up before you put the back panel back on. Or else your L and R buttons are not going to work. Oh, sorry, I forgot the Z button. Let's pop the Z button back on. Like so. And then, after all that, just put this back on. And then, just screw these back in, and you are good to go. Hey everybody, thanks for watching this video. Um, one little note I have, the C-Stick, I didn't um, replace that. It wasn't really that loose. I'm just leaving it because um, that's what I want to do right now. If yours is loose, uh, then all you have to do is the exact same thing as you did for this. Um, same procedure, just in a different place. Anyway, thanks for watching and have a nice day.